here's a very good example of how you should pray and at the same time respect God as you're doing it. Now, verse 10 says, Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Now, you know, one of the things about uh, this particular uh, verse, you know, it's, in, it's inviting God because he's saying, you know, come and set up your kingdom. You know, thy kingdom come is something that you hear in the King James Version. This one says, come and set up your kingdom. That's um, an invite into your world saying, hey, let God's sovereignty, you know, be involved in your life. Uh, you know, respecting his authority, his, his power, and his will in your life. And, um, you know, a lot of times for the Christian, it's like, it's, it's like saying, hey, Lord, you know, uh, set your kingdom up in my life that others may come to know Christ. Others may come to know God's love. So uh, understand that that second uh, section there in verse 10 uh, is, is uh, about his, about inviting God's sovereignty. Now let's move on to 11. It says, give us our food for today. Uh, give, us this, give us this day our daily bread, which we'll, you'll hear in the King James Version. Um, now, it's just a simple way of saying, hey, Lord, uh, Almighty Lord, provide for my needs. You know, uh, he's not asking you to beg. He's asking you to ask. It's important that, you know, you're going to God and asking uh, because you know, if not, that means you're expecting. Like, hey, God, you know, this, I'm your child. Just provide it for me. It doesn't go like that. You know, uh, he's a sovereign God. It's important that you ask. Uh, he knows what your needs are already, but it's almost an act of, hey, you're my child. Anything you need, you must ask. You know, uh, even though he knows beforehand, it's an act of obedience. So it's a very simple part of that pr uh, example Give us, give us our food today, or give us the, this day our daily bread. It's, um, it's providing those needs. You know, sometimes it's not always about the food. You know, sometimes it could be about your health or someone else's health, or you know, there there could be a, a, a number of needs. But it's important that you ask. It's not always about the food. Sometimes it's about the other things. But it's important that you ask for those needs. So moving on to twelve, it says, "Forgive us for doing wrong, as we forgive others." You know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we can kind of move along in our, our Christian walk or even sometimes in our relationships with others. And we forget that it's important to ask for forgiveness. In other words, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. Well, if we're not perfect and we make a mistake, it's important that you, you acknowledge your mistake and ask for forgiveness especially if you know that you are a sinful human being that are, that's going to make mistakes. So moving on to uh, verse 13. Uh, verse 13 says, uh, keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. Now, um, you know, that is a real important um, part of the prayer because remember what I said about these three things that you're going to battle regularly in your Christian life, sin, the world, uh, and the evil one. Well, this is where that plays in, where you're praying for protection from the Lord. You're praying that uh, you won't be tempted by your sin nature, the things of the world, or the evil one that uh, that are trying to uh, persuade you in one way or another um, away from the Lord. So, you know, that's a very important part. That's verse 13. Verse 14 says, if you forgive others for the wrongs they do to you, your Father in heaven will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. You know, so it's almost uh, like this understanding that, you know, how could you understand forgiveness if you don't forgive others? You know, you're asking God for forgiveness, right? You know, every everyone's going to make mistakes. You're going to ask, you, you want to ask for forgiveness. But in the same manner, are you forgiving others. Because if you can't forgive others, but you're asking God to forgive you, how will you ever understand the concept of forgiveness? So it's almost like it's reciprocal. You know, if you're asking God forgiveness, make sure you're, you're actually doing the same thing or acting in the same manner of forgiving others. You know, that's part of uh, 
you know, being loving or being godly or being holy. So that is a, a great example of, you know, what the Bible says, what Jesus says, an example of how to pray. Uh, prayer is an important thing that happens in a Christian's life. You know, uh, without it, you know, how are you communicating with God? You know, so uh, hopefully you're doing this daily. Uh, you know, it's not talking about doing this for hours at a time. It's actually, if you look at this prayer, it's not very long. You know, it, it's actually a very uh, simplified version um, of, of how to pray. So um, also look at the beginning, you know, of what it says uh, in this particular passage. It says, don't be like the show-offs that like to repeat and say the same thing over and over again. Um, and, you know, this happens a lot. You know, people tend to be creatures of uh, repetition and they learn off of each other. You know, so when somebody is praying and, you know, they think, okay, that sounds the right way. So they start to pray that way. And, you know, let's say they say Father God 20 times in their prayer. You know, that's being repetitive. And, uh, you know, he's he's warning uh, in this particular passage, hey, don't do not do that because it's almost like you're trying to sound holy. And what he's saying here is, you know, these people love to stand up and pray in the, you know, the, uh, the meeting places or the street corners or the important places. And, uh, you know, they want to make like, you know, they want to make it a show, you know, and they want to make it sound like they're this great, uh, you know, prayer warrior. And they're doing it, you know, and he's saying, hey, they get their reward. Everybody's looking at them. That's your reward. But they pray in a manner where he's saying, yeah, they like to, you know, make their prayers long and repetitive, but they really don't know God. You know, that's what he's saying in, in seven there. You know, don't talk on and on as people do who don't know God. You know, so be very careful of, you know, the way you pray. You know, are you trying to show off? Um, pray in a manner of, you know, and he says, do it in private. That's the best way. Jesus, you know, would... Um, would pull back from the crowd, pull back from his disciples and go to a place that was secluded and pray uh, and ask his father. It's just very important that you understand that uh, prayer is key in your walk with the Lord. It's part of being holy. And uh, it's important to understand the correct way to pray and the example that he gives us. And, uh, and also the example of what not to do is in there as well.